The Toyota MR2 and the Pontiac Fiero have long been popularity leaders among the two-seat sports coupe brigade. And this year, the competition between the two of them promises to really heat up. The Fiero GT has a new suspension and power steering, while the MR2 has a formidable new supercharged power plant. Well, we decided it was time that East met West to find out which car was really superior. The confrontation began last summer at racetracks over 2,000 miles apart. Toyota had leased the fast Portland International Raceway to show off the new speed of its supercharged MR2. Meanwhile, Pontiac was doing much the same thing for the revamped Fiero GT at the twisty Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Pontiac also had something else up its sleeve, a new Fiero model called the Formula. Like their Firebird formula, it put high-performance hardware in bargain model styling. And it was this GT in street clothes Fiero formula that we requested to put up against the supercharged MR2 at a third track, Georgia's Roebling Road Raceway. But first, some basics. Ever since its introduction in 1984, the biggest shortcoming of the Fiero was its heavy, unsports car-like handling. It drove far more like the Chevy Chevette on which its front suspension was based. Well, four years later, new underpinnings have arrived. The front suspension uses coil springs in a more compact design than before. The stabilizer bar is thicker, and the overall geometry not only improves ride and handling, but makes for a shorter turning radius. At the rear is a tri-link design with lower spring rates and more rearward wheel movement for a smoother ride. Rough pavement road holding is also supposed to be improved. The one new feature our Fiero did not have is the electromechanical power steering system. Its availability is delayed until at least late spring. The powertrain of the Fiero formula is like last year's GT, a multi-port injected 2.8 liter V6 delivering 135 horsepower and 165 pound-feet of torque. Standard on the formula is the GM Getrag 5-speed, it works well, though it is a bit notchy, and the shift lever is too high for smooth operation. Over at the Toyota side of our pits, the MR2 has a 16-valve four-cylinder, the same basic engine that's powered it since 1985. Only now, it's the first modern production engine to use a supercharger. It breathes through an air-to-air -air intercooler, much the way better turbo-powered cars do. All told, this engine produces 30% more power than the standard MR2 engine. Ratings are a healthy 145 horsepower and 140 pound-feet of torque. The standard gear change is also a 5-speed manual. Shifts are crisp with short throws. Since the MR2 weighs 250 pounds less than the Fiero, it should come as no surprise that it is faster. 0 to 60 was a very fast 6.5 seconds on our 30-degree day. Over the quarter mile, we recorded 15.4 seconds and a speed of 90. The supercharged power comes on rapidly without the lag usually associated with turbochargers, and the engine pulls strongly to well past 6,000 RPM. The clutch is light, maybe too light, and fast shifts come easy. But all this power does have its price, noise. There's a lot going on behind your head, and you hear every decibel. By comparison, the Fiero is almost quiet during hard acceleration. And thanks to the broader torque curve of a V6, it's almost as fast. Zero to 60 took 7.5 seconds. And the quarter mile ran 15.7 seconds at 87 miles per hour. Neither the clutch or shifter are as fluid as in the MR2, but they are worlds better than they were four years ago. Otherwise, the interior of the plain Jane Fiero is much as before. You sit very low with your legs pretty much straight out in front of you. You step over the parking brake that remains lowered even when engaged. The seat could use more side bolster support to keep you in place during fast turns. Some of our drivers had to wedge a knee against the door to keep from sliding around. The Fiero GT seats have much better support. Over the years, there have been several changes in the Fiero's large backlit and easy to read analog gauges. However, lack of space requires that some engine readouts reside in a separate pod above the center console. Straightforward controls for the temperature, ventilation, and radio reside below. They work well, but are hard to reach for most drivers. Thanks to its taller body, getting in the MR2 is easier than in the Fiero. But there's a snugger fit here. 
We do prefer its more chair-like seats, but the side bolsters are so high that wider drivers feel pinned in. Then again, both of these models are two-seat sports cars, not four-door sedans. Gauges are clear, analog, backlit, and all arranged in front of the driver. A green light tells you when the supercharger is working. While the rest of the dash retains its original piece together look, all controls are within easy reach and are simple to understand. That's good, since the last thing you want to do at speed in the supercharged MR2 is be distracted. While the MR2 always handled well, there is now more than enough power to quickly explore its cornering limits. Our staff was very divided on the handling of the MR2. Some felt its slot car nature made it a ball to drive fast. Others felt the MR2 felt insecure, too easy to push beyond its limits. At peak cornering power, the tail can unexpectedly twitch around, and the car is so throttle sensitive that it's hard to apply just the right amount to keep the car composed. By contrast, the Fiero formula was extremely predictable and felt solid even near its slightly lower cornering limits. The new suspension still pushes into turns, but now only mildly. The manual steering is precise with good road feel, and the steering wheel won't pull out of your hands over bumps quite as badly as it used to. Now that the Fiero's front can make turns, we were also impressed at how well the back end followed suit. There was none of the twitchy rear end complaints found in our last two tests of Fiero GTs. Even the slower revving V6 didn't bother us, since there was always enough power when needed. Since most owners of these cars will spend 99.9% .9 of their driving time on roads rather than racetracks, it follows that these must be practical cars too. Fuel economy is quite good on the MR2 with ratings of 24 city and 30 highway. The Fiero is thirstier at 18 city and 28 highway, but still very acceptable for a sports car. With engines in the rear, both use the front bay for components. In the Fiero's case, there is little room for anything besides a few tools or a shaving kit. The rear luggage compartment, however, is deep. It will take a small golf bag, a design requirement, or this flexible-sided luggage. A hanging suit bag will also fit behind the front passenger seat. The MR2 has enough space up front for a briefcase or a soft overnight bag. But while its rear compartment looks as big as the Fiero, it was not quite deep enough for our suitcase. Neither car had a problem with engine heat trying to overheat our luggage. We also did our best to overheat the brakes on these two two-seat sprinters. Both used disc all round. However, those on the MR2 were very touchy in panic stops and would fade fairly rapidly at racetrack speeds. Stops from 55 averaged 126 feet, with some premature locking at the front right wheel. The Fiero's disc brakes were much easier to modulate and suffered from less hard-use fade. In our brake test, distances were shorter than for the MR2 at 118 feet from 55. We did notice the right rear wanted to lock up during the last few feet of travel. Pedal feel was solid. As for price, the Fiero formula begins at $11,000, with our car totaling $13,000. The racier GT has all of our car's equipment standard plus fastback bodywork. It costs $14,000. By comparison, the supercharged MR2 begins at $16,400. Our car was loaded and tipped the price sheet at just over $19,000. By our figuring, the most expensive Fiero GT you can buy would cost only slightly more than the least expensive supercharged MR2. So, which one is more super than the other, and for whom? Well, we know that the MR2 is faster, both in a straight line and around a racing circuit. It also has the best seats and the most noise. While the reliability of its supercharger is unknown, Toyota quality is well known. The Fiero, however, is a far more comfortable car to drive hard, and it is only a little slower than the MR2. It also has better brakes, and its engine is less complicated. Its reliability record has improved to acceptable, and it is far less expensive than the supercharged MR2. So, while the MR2 now has the power to match its suspension and is generally a thrill to drive, overall we would rather live with the Fiero. And on the racetrack, it allowed us to be less than 100% attentive at all times and still have fun. The only sad part is that it took Pontiac four years to get the Fiero right. We hope it's not too late.